Hello and welcome to the amazing sport of FPV drones. I'm just your average hobbyist and my goal is to teach you the basics to get you in the air quickly and above all safely. So grab your gear and let's get ready for flight. Whether you got a ready to fly kit or you build it yourself, you're going to need some basics. The drone, transmitter so you can control the drone, battery chargers, lots of spare props, and of course batteries. Now there are several different types of protocols when controlling your drone and you need to make sure that your transmitter has the proper receiver in your drone so they communicate properly. It's like Apple and PC. They don't talk very well. The basics are Spectrum, DSM, Tyrannus runs FR Sky, and this controller is a Fat Shark controller. It runs Fly Sky. Don't confuse FR Sky with Fly Sky. They're two different protocols. Now, our batteries come in anywhere from 1 to 6S right now. If you're unfamiliar with batteries, imagine a AA battery. It's actually not a battery, it's a cell. Put two of them together, now it becomes a battery, and this is now a 2S battery. Put four of them, and you have a 4S battery. 6, 6S. That's how batteries work. Make sure your drone is taking the proper battery, otherwise you'll fry it if you put too much voltage through the drone. The flight controller board and the motors are only meant to handle a certain amount of voltage and you have to make sure you run the right stuff. As far as propellers go, we run our propellers in mainly a props in configuration where the props are spinning in towards the camera. You can flip that around to go the other way, there are advantages and disadvantages of that. But for now, if we're running props in orientation, the front left prop We'll be spinning clockwise and so will the back right. The front right and rear left will be spinning counterclockwise. If you're unfamiliar with how the props go, it's similar to putting your arm out the window of a moving car. As you tilt your arm up, wind hits it, gets deflected down, pushing your arm up. Propellers do the same thing. As it's spinning around, it needs to catch the air and deflect it down. So make sure your props are on the right motors and spinning the right way, otherwise your drone will not fly. When it comes to battery chargers, there's a lot of different options out there and I would just recommend getting a good battery charger that's a smart charger that can do trickle charge and you should eventually understand how internal resistance works on the batteries and how each cell is performing against the other one and it's good to have a nice display to show you that. A couple things to remember with the drone is that if you're ever tuning it or working on it and you plug it into the computer, Always remove the props when tuning this thing and you have power on it. If these arm and you're not ready for it, they can do some serious damage and cut you up. Also, if your drone has an antenna, that can be removed. Always make sure the antenna is on before putting power onto the drone. If you power on the drone without the antenna, the VTX will most likely burn up after a couple minutes. It needs the antenna for its resistance. When we're talking about the controller, if you have a ready-to-fly kit, you'll have to figure out what switch is your arm switch and what is your mode switch. Mode switch is horizon mode, level mode, and acro mode. Level and horizon keep you level if you let go of the sticks, but they won't keep you in the air. Acro mode is full control, 100%, it's all you. And I do recommend you learn in acro mode because that's what we want. We want to do flips and tricks and go really fast. So we're going to take it slow, but that's what we should be learning in. Now let's find a place to fly this thing. Forestry land, private property, parks are all great places to fly. If you have the option, flying over grass is really good because it's much more forgiving when you do crash the drone. Wherever you do choose to fly, make sure you're away from any sort of bystanders. You don't want to be out where somebody can stumble into your flight zone. Some of these drones are capable of going up to 100 miles an hour. You also need to make sure that you're not in an FAA no-fly zone or too close to an airport. If you're unsure on whether or not you're in a legal fly zone, you can download the Before You Fly app or Air Maps on your smartphone. There can be some very large fines and some serious consequences for flying a drone in a no-fly zone, so make sure you check whenever you go out. 
Once you have all your gear and a safe place to fly, it's time to check with our co-pilot. Our co-pilot is our safety checklist. First of all, we want to make sure it's clear. Is the area we're about to fly in clear from anyone and anything that we could damage or hurt? Next, we want to turn on our transmitter first, then our goggles and our drone last. Next, we want to check the orientation of our props. Like I said before, if we put our props on the wrong way, it's not going to fly. Next, we're going to look for interference. Turn on your goggles, look through the camera, make sure you're on the same channel as the drone. If you're seeing any sort of weird interference, try changing channels on either your goggles or the drone. Linked. Grab your controller and quickly arm the props and disarm. We just want to make sure that the controller is talking to the drone. When you arm the quad, all the motors should be spinning and you should be ready for flight. Next up is overhead. We want to give one look overhead, make sure there's nothing in our way like power lines, buildings, trees, even a flock of seagulls. And last, take off. That's when you get to send it. Now that we have a place to fly, let's talk about the controls. We're going to be flying in mode 2. Now mode 2 means we're going to have the throttle and yaw on the left stick and pitch and roll on the right stick. When we get our drone up flying we have three axes of movement and we call those yaw, pitch, and roll. Yaw is our pivot left to right, roll is our rolling left to right, and our pitch is our pitching forward and back. Pitch determines our speed. The more you pitch forward, the faster you'll go. If this is the first time you've ever flown a drone, we're going to be flying line of sight first. So no goggles. We want to start to develop some of that muscle memory. So always turn on your transmitter first, plug in the drone, place it on a level surface away from any uh, loose debris, and stand directly behind the quad. Before we take flight, there are two different ways you can hold the controller. You can use your thumbs and use it kind of like a video game, or you can pinch the joysticks. Now, I've been playing video games for over 20 years, but when I started flying drones, I needed to switch over to the pinch method. So try both or even a hybrid and see which one's best for you. Always be ready to flick that disarm button on your controller. It's very important to stop the motors from spinning if you're ever out of control or in a crash. You can damage the quad even more if the propellers are spinning, but they're blocked by some sort of obstruction. Now that we're ready, you can arm the motors and start to throttle up slowly. Our goal is to lift the drone two or three inches off the ground and then kill the motors and let it drop back down. Readjust the drone, get it level, and then arm the props, get it to fly two or three inches, and let it fall again. What we're trying to develop here is the muscle memory of where your hover point on the control stick is. Once you feel comfortable with that, we can move on to our next step. When you're ready to take off and actually hover a little bit, you need to be slightly more aggressive with the throttle. Our goal is to actually pop up off the ground about five or six feet. If you rise up slowly, you'll get a lot of prop wash from the ground, and it's very hard to control the drone when you're so close to the surface. So bring it up a little ways so the only thing you have to fight is gravity and maybe a little wind. Once you're up there, you'll notice you need to control the drone constantly. You're always fighting the drone's drifting movements and the elevation. That's very normal. Our goal now is to practice hovering in a small area. Once you feel confident hovering, you can roll left a little bit and then roll back right. Pitch forward, pitch back. Get used to the movements of the drone and how fast it responds. Once you feel confident with that, we can slap on some goggles and have some real fun. Now that we're ready for our goggles, we need to check our camera angle on the drone. We want about 15 to 20 degrees for beginners to start. Do not have your camera level because as soon as you pitch forward to move, you'll be staring at the ground. Freestyle pilots run anywhere from 35 to 40 degrees and racers run anywhere from 40 to 55 degree on their camera lens. Once you get up, we're not gonna hover anymore. It's actually very difficult to hover in an FPV drone because there's some distortion due to the camera lens and it's hard to have uh, accurate distance and references looking through the goggles. So as soon as we get up in the drone, we want to pitch forward a little bit and start our movement. 
Make sure you have a nice open field around the size of a football field or something like that so you can really get out and start doing some circles. Once you're up and flying, congratulations, you've just joined us in the wild world of FPV. And let me tell you, it's a roller coaster ride. I could go on and on about tips and tricks and tuning and rates, but honestly, it's a rabbit hole you're going to have to dive into and experience for yourself. There's a lot of information always coming in with these drones and a lot to learn. If you're ever looking for information, you can find me on YouTube, Average Hobbyist. I'll always have news, information, and reviews for you. Until next time, keep flying, keep it safe, and keep ripping packs.